Today we'll be going over the first video in section 4, Retrieving Data from the Server. In the last section, we look at maintaining React applications with unit testing and flow type. In this section, we're going to take a look at fetching data from the server, adding a form for filtering orders, and using immutable JS for our state. This video is about fetching orders from the server. In this video, we'll get familiar with Flux and power our table of orders with data from the server. We're going to load the orders from the server instead of from the data file we currently have. To do this, we're going to get more structured about our state management. Facebook has invented a pattern called Flux. Flux has four main concepts. Actions, a dispatcher, stores, and views. In React, the views are components. The idea behind Flux is to ensure unidirectional data flow. That means that state doesn't crisscross up and down our component tree. Instead, when a state change is to be made, an action is called. The action is then dispatched via the dispatcher to the store, which houses the state. The state is updated and the view slash component is notified and can re-render. Unidirectional data flow ensures a very predictable system and helps with debugging and maintaining our application. There are many Flux libraries out there. We're going to pick one of the most popular ones, alt.js. It has a nice API and great support for server-side rendering, which we're going to take a look at in a future video. We're going to install Alt as well as Express, which is a Node.js web server that we'll use to serve our application and orders list. I've prepared a simple JSON file with all the orders that the server can serve to the client. Most likely, in a typical application, this data would come from a database, but we don't need anything that advanced for our demo application. I've also prepared a server.js file, which describes two routes. slash for our application entry point and slash orders.json for our data. I'll start that in a separate tmux pane and navigate to the URL in my browser. Everything works as expected, though it's not fetching the data yet from the server via Ajax. To fix that, we'll get started with alt.js. First, we'll create an alt.js file that instantiates an alt object. Within this object is a few APIs for creating stores and actions as well as the dispatcher. We'll create orders action with a function to update the orders. It calls dispatch to pass along the new data to the store, which we're going to build next. The order store will listen for the update orders event on the action. When the dispatch is called in the action, the update orders event is emitted by alt. We're also going to initialize an orders property with an empty array. The event handler is responsible for updating that array with the new data. In our orders component, we'll insert a few lifecycle methods to hook into all of this. If you recall from section 1, Component did mount is called right after the component has entered the DOM, and component will unmount right before it leaves the DOM. A perfect place to attach and detach event handlers. We'll add on change, which updates the component state when the store has changed, and call that for changes on the store via the event listener. We'll import the store, Set up the onChange function to always be bound to the instance of the component. And set the initial state of the component to the state of the store. Finally, we'll get rid of the orders data dummy array and get the data from the state. Transpiling and refreshing the browser yields no orders. That's expected. We've only set up our component to manage state in Flux stores. We're not actually fetching anything from the server yet. To fetch the orders, we'll start by adding another action. We'll call it fetch orders. It'll dispatch empty array right away. This will update the view with an empty array, and we could use that to show a spinner if we like. Then we'll call a method on a fetcher. Expect that that returns a promise and call the update orders action with the result. Of course, we haven't built the fetcher yet. We'll quickly import it 
even though it doesn't exist, and get started on it. The fetcher is a simple object with one function. Flux doesn't prescribe a way to communicate with the server, so we're going with something really simple. We'll use the ES6 fetch API to fetch the orders. Parse the JSON with JSON method, and then parse the orders. We need the final step to convert things like data strings and float strings into moment objects and real floats. We'll use object assign to merge the objects without mutating the original state. Finally, we're going to need to include the Babel polyfill in our main.js file, which is the entry point for our application. We need this because not all browsers have the new fetch API as well as object assign. Lastly, we'll update the store to handle a new action and call that action in component did mount. Transpiling and refreshing, we see the successful flow. Data is fetched from the server and rendered in a table and all our filters work as expected. In this video, we installed Alt and used Flux to manage our state and fetch orders from the server. In the next video, we'll take a look at state manipulation with forms.